I'm Nick Caruso, and you're watching This Week in Gear. In just a few minutes, we'll take a look at what cars residents of every U.S. state consider their dream car. But first, we're going to cover some of this week's top headlines. And if you want any more information about anything we discuss in this episode, just check the description below for links to our online coverage. And with that, let's get started. That fifth pocket on your favorite pair of jeans, do you know what it's for? If you think you do, you're probably wrong. Five pocket jeans have been the gold standard in denim for decades. There's even a fifth pocket on the oldest pair of jeans in Levi's archives, and that's from 1879. But what's that fifth pocket for? It's not meant for coins, like some folks think. Its original use was to store a pocket watch. For the full story, see the link below. Similar to that last story, uh, have you ever noticed there's this little loop on some of your favorite button-down shirts right in the back between your shoulder blades? Well, we wondered what that was for, so we decided to get to the bottom of it. It's sort of obvious that the loop on the back of your shirt is meant to hang the shirt somewhere, but why and where did that come from? Our style team dug deep and found the answer. The loop dates back to the mid-1900s where it was utilized by sailors who had to fit all of their clothing into narrow, shallow lockers. No room for hangers, hence the loop. More on that story below too. This next story is online, but you can find it in print as well in issue 13 of Gear Patrol magazine, which is on newsstands now. And it's about Omega, the watchmaker. It's no question that Omega is one of the best watchmakers in the world. So we decided to talk to their CEO and president to find out why. Reynald Eschleman is the president and CEO of Omega Watches. For issue 13 of Gear Patrol magazine, our watch's editor sat down with him to talk about his quarter-century tenure with the company, James Bond's watches, going to the moon, and much more. Read the interview after the jump below. Lastly, a piece of gear news, a new tent that makes sleeping in the outdoors a little more fun. The brand Camark is launching its newest tent this coming November. It's the second version of their Sunda backpacking tent, appropriately named Sunda 2.0. The Sunda 2.0's parlor trick is that it easily converts from a ground tent to a suspended tent. Check the link below to see why that's so novel and to see about getting one for yourself. And now for our top story. We've been covering a lot of automotive news on This Week in Gear lately, but we're not complaining. It just seems sort of ironic given our work from home situation as of late. Now, that being said, we found this news uh, from the publication AutoWise, who did a, a fair bit of data mining on Twitter. They're looking for geotagged tweets that include the hashtag DreamCar, or simply the phrase DreamCar, typed out, uh, in order to determine which states like which cars the most, or at least lust after them the most. And it's a pretty fun survey, and the results are equally fun. Now, it should be said that uh, staff writer Tyler Duffy points out that the, this results, uh, that the survey results should be taken with a grain of salt because there are so many other variables that uh, could skew these data uh, one way or another. For instance, uh, fans of Tesla cars may be more apt to tweet about liking them than, say, people who drive Toyota Land Cruisers. But, like I say, that being said, the survey is pretty fun and the results are cool. Here they are. The Tesla Model S is the brand's flagship product, a sleek, all-electric sedan with plenty of power and seating options. It starts at about 80K and is known particularly for its eco-friendly capability, large central touchscreen display, and because Tesla's leader, Elon Musk, is entertaining to follow in the news. The Model S is the dream car in more states than any other car in this list. It took top honors in 20 states. Unsurprisingly, many of those states feature huge cities, like California, Illinois, and New York, for instance, and others like Colorado, Oregon, and Washington are known for their eco-conscious population. The others include Arizona, Delaware, Florida, Idaho, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Minnesota, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Nevada, Rhode Island, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. The Ford Mustang nameplate is over 55 years old now, and it's still going very strong. It's available starting around $27,000 with turbocharged four cylinders and V8s, 
automatic and manual transmissions, convertible tops, and in coupe form. Top-end models like the GT500 feature performance that verges on supercar territory, and the Mustang took top honors in 13 states, a fair number of which are in the Midwest. That of course includes the Stang's home state, and mine, Michigan, and the Mustang is also a favorite in sunny Hawaii. Other states with the love for America's top-selling sports car are Arkansas, Connecticut, Georgia, Iowa, Maryland, Missouri, Nebraska, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and West Virginia. Range Rovers, the premium SUVs that go anywhere, are top-tier models from Land Rover and start at just over $90,000. There are also other variants of the Range Rover which cost considerably less but maintain the Rangey's luxe looks. The Range Rover Sport features a shorter wheelbase and is more performance oriented. The Range Rover Velar is a newer model that ups the design element with a sexy profile. And the Range Rover Evoque is a much smaller take on a Land Rover. All feature multiple engine options in Land Rover signature and wildly capable off-road tech and are most popular in six states that feature appropriate terrain for such capable vehicles. Those are Alaska, Maine, Montana, North Dakota, Vermont, and Wyoming. The Jeep Wrangler is the platonic ideal of a fun truck. Starting a bit under $30,000, the Wrangler comes in two and four door flavors and you can take its doors off and its roof off and fold its windshield flat for whatever reason. And like Land Rovers, Jeeps are fantastically capable in any trim thanks to a shortish wheelbase and Jeep's incredible off-road mechanicals. Wranglers are powered by 2.0-liter turbo 4s, 3.6-liter V6s, and a more recent option, a 3.0-liter diesel V6. The Wrangler is a dream car in four states, Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. The Chevrolet Corvette is also a dream car in four states, which is no surprise given the amount of car you can buy for a base price of under $60,000. It's all new for 2020, and instead of the front engine layout the mark has utilized since the 1950s, the newest Corvette features a mid-mounted V8 and supercar styling. In fact, our review of the 2020 Corvette Stingray calls it the supercar for everyone. Perhaps that's true, but according to Twitter data, the Corvette is a dream car for people only in Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, and Ohio. Last on the list, but with a respectable three states, considering it a dream car, is the Chevrolet Camaro, which starts around $25,000. The Camaro competes with the Mustang directly and offers many of the same configuration as Ford's pony car. States that lust after Camaros include North Carolina, South Dakota, and Texas. So what do you think? What do you think of those results? Uh, does the, your state's dream car line up with your tastes? What would you prefer? Where are you? I wanna know all that information, so drop it in the comments below. Now, for instance, I'm in New York right now, but I'm from Michigan, and though I really do love Tesla cars, I would much rather have a Mustang. And next, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Meg Lappy, who is going to run through next week's Instagram story calendar. It's chock full of really great stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to follow along. Find us on Instagram. Our handle is Gear Patrol, one word. Here's Meg. I am here to bring you our social calendar for next week. We got a full packed week ahead and very excited to share that with you. First up, a story you'll see peppered through all next week is Blaze of Glory. It's a Gear Patrol magazine special. We drove 1,400 miles across the West in three different cars. Stay tuned for that multiple days next week. Back to our regular scheduled programming. On Monday, we've got our motoring editor, Will Sable Courtney, is testing out a Porsche 911 Turbo S convertible. Send him those questions, he'll get back to you on Monday. Tuesday, we have coffee at home with staff writer Gerald Ortiz. On Wednesday, we're back with more watches. Five readers sent in watches that we will be sharing. And then at the end of the day, we've got a happy hour with Oak and Oscar. Our editor, Orrin Hartov, will be hosting that all on Zoom. So stay tuned for those details down the road. On Thursday, we've got staff picks. This week, it is the socks that our staff is wearing at home. Stay tuned. You're definitely going to want to pick up all of these. Friday, we've got a workout with Casey Martin, who's our multimedia producer. She is currently testing Tempo, which is an at-home workout machine. And you can shoot her over some questions. She'll answer all those on Friday. So that's it for next week. If there's anything you ever want to see or reach out, feel free to DM us at Gear Patrol on Instagram or shoot us an email, social at gearpatrol.com. Thanks so much. See you next week. That's all for this week's episode of This Week in Gear. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you're staying healthy and happy, and we'll see you here next week.